Every January, we make predictions about the year ahead for property and publicly rate ourselves in December. But this has not been a normal year. We're only seven months into 2023, and we've already had the mortgage market imploding, a political bombshell, and a rental crisis that's intensified. So it's worth taking a look back at how the year has performed against our expectations so far. Spoiler, not very well. What might happen for the rest of 2023, and what I'm personally doing as an investor to deal with what might be coming next. Let's start with the good, because, well, it won't take long. We said that Nottingham, Birmingham and Manchester would be the top performers for house price growth. And indeed, that has been the case whether you look over the last 12 months or the last three months. We'll link to a video below giving more detail about our hotspots for this year. But it's just as well that that went well because not much else. Has. We said that house prices would fall by no more than 2% in 2023. Currently, they're down 1.5% over the calendar year to date, according to Nationwide. So we're not wrong yet, but we will be unless something dramatic happens. We'll come back to just how wrong we're likely to be after looking at the principal cause of that wrongness, which is interest rates. We both predicted back in January that the base rate would peak no higher than 4.5% and would end the year lower than that. <laughs> that is not correct. So we're definitively wrong on that first part. It's 5% now. But the question is just how much wronger we'll get. The market is currently anticipating a peak of above 6% because inflation has remained stickier than expected. This, of course, has had a knock-on effect for mortgages. Back in January, mortgage rates had started drifting downwards after the mini-budget shock of last October. And we expected that as inflation cooled, they'd continue in that direction, which they did for much of the first part of the year. But as it became clear that inflation just wasn't dying off and the base rate would remain higher for longer, mortgages spiked, with the average two-year fixed product crossing the 6% threshold again. This obviously restricts the number of people who want to borrow and the amount that people can afford to borrow, which is exactly the purpose, which in turn puts pressure on house prices. This all operates with a lag, so we don't know for sure what the full effect will be. So what will the rest of 2023 hold? Well, the Office for Budget Responsibility believes that house prices will fall by 10% from their peak, and the researchers at Pantheon Economics agree. We're currently down 1.5% year to date and nearly 5% from the peak, meaning we're about halfway there. And you know, that sounds about right. In the absence of mass redundancies or a major economic shock, the most likely outcome seems to me to be for prices to just grind gradually downwards for the rest of this year and some way into 2024. And as I said in a recent video, which we'll link to below, we really should be looking at house prices after removing the influence of inflation. Because as everything is getting more expensive quickly at the moment, if house prices are one of the few things that aren't, then they're actually falling quite quickly. In fact, in inflation-adjusted terms, house prices have already fallen by 12.5% from their peak and are now back to the same level they were in 2013 and 2003. So if they do end up falling another 5% over the rest of this year and into 2024, and the price of everything else goes up by another 7%, then we'll end up with nearly a 25% inflation-adjusted drop, which is roughly the same as we had in 2008. Of course, anything could happen the economy could unravel and we'll end up with a far more severe drop than that, or everyone could end up being surprised. Literally no one knows, however confident they sound, and as we've discovered, even looking just seven months into the future is much harder than it feels like it should be. But what does this mean for you now, and what am I doing in the light of the madness that's been the first half of 2023? Well, for anyone who suddenly found themselves with unprofitable properties because of mortgage rates going up, it's bad news because it's a really tough market to sell into. Honestly, I earmarked a couple of properties last year that I was going to sell once tenants gave notice, just because they've been perennially poor performers. But if they became vacant today, I'd probably just re-rent them, because I could imagine they'd just sit on the sale market for a long time, costing me money. And the consolation prize for investors is that the rental market is ridiculously strong, so I'm confident that I would be able to quickly re-let at a very strong rent. Rents have increased by 5% over the past 12 months, which includes existing lets. The lets to new tenants increases are even higher. In Manchester, they've hit 22% and Birmingham 18%, which is just crazy. So if your mortgage costs have increased, but you haven't been charging the market rent, which is a very common situation, increasing it to the current market level might not make up the whole of the difference, but it will help. In another video that we'll link to below, I describe how to go about having this type of conversation with your tenants and why it's important to do so. What if your model is more short-term in nature, such as flipping properties or adding value and refinancing? Well, then it's doubly not good. Budgets of end buyers are squeezed and valuers are feeling more negative than ever. But personally, I'm building a portfolio for the long term. So if the right opportunity comes along, 
it makes no sense to hold off if I believe in the consensus view that prices are going to fall by another nominal, say, 5% especially as I tend to negotiate more than that off the current market value anyway. Of course, if the market does suddenly crater by 10% or more, I'll be a little upset, but I'm still confident I'll come out ahead in 20 years time. And as I said in this video, at any point from 2016 onwards, you could have made a pretty good argument for not investing and you can't just sit around doing nothing forever. But that's just me. That's what I'm doing based on my beliefs and my situation. It doesn't mean it's what anyone else should do. And there's nothing wrong with sitting back and seeing what happens. And something that gives me comfort is that because when I'm buying now, I'm doing so at today's mortgage rates and being stress tested at an even higher rate. If the numbers work, I can be pretty confident that they'll continue working. Of course, mortgage rates can go up further from here, but it's a very different situation from buying at rates of 2%, knowing that they'll go up significantly at some point, but not knowing when. But being able to access the best mortgage rates and understand your options is something that far more investors struggle with than they should. In fact, by misunderstanding a few key points and failing to take the right advice, it's not unusual for investors to cost themselves thousands of pounds over the term of a mortgage, or even end up getting forced out of the market altogether. So watch this video next, where within 10 minutes, you could learn everything you need to know before speaking to a mortgage broker, and I share the top three tips that have served me well for over 15 years.